In this component, we discuss how the TNA is linked to other national and international processes. As we've discussed in previous components, the TNA does not operate in isolation. And ultimately, it's the responsibility of individual countries to position and utilize the TNAs in a way that makes most sense for them. Um, TNAs, sorry, countries often ask if and how the TNA process feeds into NAMAs, that is, Nationally Appropriate Mitigation Actions, or NAPs, National Adaptation Plans, and if so, which of these should come first? The technology action plans, as discussed in the previous component, are really, is really the foc uh, should really focus on what can be done to scale up investment in low carbon and climate resilient technologies. And that is the overall objective and starting point for working out how the methodology and outputs of the TNA should relate to other UNFCCC mandated initiatives, including the Climate Technology Center and Network. It's important to remember that the TNAs focus primarily on technology and not on understanding climate risks or strategies per se. And again, the TAPs are really the main starting point for linking the TNA to other initiatives. On, we can understand the uh, wider processes in terms of adaptation and mitigation. On the adaptation side, the national Adaptation plans, NAPs, or previously NAPAs, are used as a means of identifying medium and long term adaptation needs and developing and implementing strategies and programs to address those needs. It therefore makes sense for countries that have already conducted uh, or are close to completing their NAPs to use the TNA process as a means to address the issues identified in the NAP. For example, Peru is devoting the chapter on technology in its third national communication to the results of its TNA. And in Colombia, the Regional Development Plan for Cartagena draws upon the TNA for its adaptation plan. On the mitigation side, the situation is more often reversed. The mitigation project concepts that are detailed in the TAP have the potential to be formally registered as NAMAs by the participating countries. And on that point, the Technology Executive Committee of the UNFCCC has published a briefing entitled Possible Integration of the TNA Process with the NAMA and NAP Processes. And we encourage countries to, to read those documents. But in the bigger picture, uh, the TNA TAP process is really a step towards securing external financing from various multilateral sources, including, for example, the Green Climate Fund. The other international process that has been ongoing for the last couple of years that has gained a lot of attention is the INDCs. That stands for Intended Nationally Determined Contributions, uh, which was agreed upon in 2014. And since then, some discussion has taken place on how TNAs can and should relate to the INDCs. Well, briefly, first of all, to understand what are INDCs, they are basically uh, post-2020 emissions reduction pledges and they, the INDCs have provided key inputs into the climate negotiation process ahead of COP21 in Paris. As such, it makes sense for countries conducting a TNA to explicitly link this process to their INDC commitments. For example, it should include a focus on the same priority sectors and use the quantified emissions reduction targets as an input into clarifying the decision context. That is the main connection between TNAs and INDCs. Now a few words about the Climate Technology Centre and Network, which has been operational since 2014. Hosted by UNEP, it is also made up of 11 regional centers, five of which are involved in the TNA process. This is the operational arm of the UNFCCC technology mechanism, and its remit is to stimulate technology cooperation and enhance the development of transfer of technologies to developing countries at their request. So this is very much connected to the Poznan Strategic Program on Technology Transfer, 
which we mentioned in the first component. And there, so there's a strong connection between TNA and CTCN. And it could really be seen as a bridge between the TNAs and larger multilateral financing, for example, the Green Climate Fund. In terms of what the, T the CTCM provides, it's offering technical assistance to developing countries and a knowledge platform on low carbon and climate uh, resilient technologies. And with this slide, we summarize the key connections between the TNA and other international processes.